Hey everybody, it's Glenn back in this video with another action figure comparison and by God it's Kane! And by God it's... Kane? So first up we have Mattel's Kane from the WWE Elite Collection Series 19. On the back of that packaging we see the other figures available in Series 19, the bio, the stats and a picture of the big red monster himself. Then from Poundland, and if you're from the other side of the pond and wondering what the heck is Poundland, well it's the British equivalent of your dollar store type store, and it's pro wrestler, wrestler, kinda Kane. I mean I guess they don't want to come out and call him Kane and risk falling foul of the might of the WWE legal team, but look at it, you don't have to be Sherlock to figure out who it's trying to be. So bought from Poundland, but made by Fantastic. The packaging back is largely blank, so I guess you could draw in your own crappy looking pictures of your favorite WWE stars. I'll resist the urges, I don't want to be giving Fantastic any ideas, because this figure is evidence that they have none of their own. So as they go toe to toe, it's Mattel versus Fantastic. Fantastic official versus Poundland knockoff. It's Kane versus Kinda Kane. So you know how these action figure comparisons work. We're going to take a look at the various aspects of each action figure, comparing sculpt, deco, articulation, and accessories. Then at the end of the video, you guys are going to decide which one is best. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I couldn't say that and keep a straight face. Here they are both out of packaging Mattel's cane. They've done a really good job with nailing the likeness. He literally looks like he's just stepped through the curtain. He's marching down the entrance ramp to the ring to cause all manner of mayhem. In comparison, Fantastics looks like a mutant cosplaying as Kane. And I don't mean the cool kind of X-Men mutant. I mean the kind of mutant the parents elect to abort. Then the costume of the Mattel one has the deco of the fire up the right leg and then all the stitching detail there is sculpted in relief. In comparison, Fantastic, not quite as detailed. They've just gone for single red stitching paint detail across the chest. They've ticked the box on Kane's signature gloved hand, albeit a fingerless glove here. And then the only other detail really is his big ugly screwed butthole. So now taking a closer look and Mattel have nailed the face sculpt, his mask is like the details of his wrestling getup and that's sculpted in relief. Yet the mask doesn't hide the expression that's under there. He looks like that mean monster that's ready to tombstone you straight to hell. Fantastic on the other hand. He's got a big ski slope of a Bruce Forsyth chin that's all crooked, perhaps the result of somebody's right hand. The mask is just painted on and does nothing to hide how ugly this face sculpt is. He has a gaze which is constantly staring off to the left. Hey, perhaps looking for the next right hand? Yeah, his hair is all shiny and glossy, exactly how the Lady Shampoo commercials tell you how it should be. Yet that glossiness is probably the result from old-fashioned paint that's full of lead and it's gonna give me cancer for touching it. Now turning our attention towards articulation, the heads of each rotate side to s <laughs> Oh dear. And then Mattel's cane is able to look down and up. Uh, the shoulders both have rotation and then Mattel's moves up this much and then back down. There's upper arm rotation. Both have a single jointed elbow. Mattel's rotates at the wrist and is hinged moving down and up. Actually, the elbow articulation on cane is different on each arm. On his left arm, it moves up and down, whereas on his right arm it moves in and out, which is handy, because that way he can cradle his decapitated head. Then Mattel's cane has waist rotation and an ab crunch moving backwards and forwards. At the hips, Mattel's moves out to the side, back in, to the front, uh, not so much to the back, there's upper leg rotation. At the hips, kind of cane's legs just move forwards and backwards. Tells has a double jointed knee, rotation at the top of the boot, then the ankle is hinged, moving backwards and forwards, 
and it also has an ankle pivot. Fantastic's Kinder Cane has a single jointed knee, but the rest of his joints should be commended for getting through this segment without breaking. For an accessory, Mattel's Cane comes with a welder mask. Kinder Cane comes with no accessories other than the promise that they'll refund or replace if you're not happy with the quality. Challenge accepted. Anyway, that completes my comparison, so let me know in the comments below which action figure you think is best. Is it Kane? Is it kind of Kane? And if you do pick kind of Kane, just know that his headless corpse will haunt you in your dreams. But really, the only plus side to kind of Kane is he costs just one pound compared to Mattel's Kane, which was $17.99. For that money, I could have bought 17 kind of Kanes. I could have even dug down the back of the sofa, found an extra penny, and bought 18. Admittedly, Kinder Kane's head popped off as soon as I turned it, which makes me question, is he really even worth a pound? Honestly, it just amazes me that you can walk onto your average British high street, buy this Kinder Kane from Poundland that flirts so closely with the WWE's licensing. Anyway, for an action figure comparison featuring... Click this video. As ever, please help me out by giving this video a big thumbs up. Also remember to comment, share, and subscribe. Check out the description beneath this video for links to my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Click those links and connect with me there too. Hope to see you in my next video. Mm, bye.